What is up, everybody? I have Jim to my right, Mr. Ryan Muck and Hearn across from me. Gentlemen, I'm drunk. Oh, my gosh. I'm drunk off 300 rum. That's right. We're talking about the 300 rum today, and we might be punch drunk because that thing packs a wall up on the front end and the back end. It's got some recoil. Is it worth it? That's that. Maybe that's a question we'll get to eventually. But uh, Ryan, that's why we have you and the, and uh, my plethora of notes here that you guys were making oh, fun I'll, of me earlier yeah, about. I'll have what he's having. Uh, <laughs> the three hundred rum, Ryan. What do we, what do we got going on here? And, and I'll be fact checking you the whole way with my notes. Here. Well, I want to back up and something that I've noticed more and more often as I work with you is you are really good at dad jokes, puns. When I'm you a dad, re- when you retire, well, I know, but when you retire, Laffy Taffy. Oh, the there uh, you could write the little things on there. Phenomenal. I'm drunk. That's how he starts, and then ties it all in. Incredible. That is a feat of inc- yeah, extraordinary. Well, thank you. Audio. Can you imagine, like, ability, of all yeah. the things, that's your talent? Great. Pretty good, bud. <laughs> Entries and transitions. That's awesome. We cool. started it at the bottom, and now we on top. Three hundred rum. Three hundred rum. As We're, big as they get. It's like the the largest commercial thirty caliber magnum out there. Is it real? Like it's, you're gonna? That's, well, there's 3378 Weatherby, and if we're going on physical dimensions, I guess maybe that one gets it. But it's a dandy of a round. Yeah, uh, it's big. I now, re- is that just? I remember just, when it was new, yeah. but it's not new. 1999. No, it's I. I remember as well when it came out. I remember thinking that at that time I was maybe a lad of nine or ten. <sighs> I'm thinking that's what a guy needs for Minnesota Whitetails. Ryan, see, I get skeptical about things that are just big. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quick try and transition to what I was actually getting at. Would you? Before everyone's minds really go down the gutter. But but I get skeptical because in today's day and age, you got things that are giant for good reason. Let's just say a Ram 3500 Dually. That's mm. that's big for good reason, right? Yep. They got things that are big for no reason whatsoever, like a donked Southern jacked up on rubber band tires truck, that's just big for being big. You I know call I mean? those I call those tar babies. They, you just drive them on the tar, right? It, is that's not what this is, is it? I mean, did they just make well, it big for the sake of being big, or, or does it actually so yes have a and, reason for this? Yes and no. Um, it's a pretty modern case when you look at it. When we're when we're looking. Um, contextually at modern cases. So we've eliminated the belt. Mark, thankfully, has brought some visual aids for us. Let me get this out of the way. We have uh, an old 300 Win Mag here. This was the 30 caliber standby for a long time. Classic. Yep, it is a classic. Um, I don't have a 300 Weatherby here, although I feel I should have. Um, because that was another super magnum, nineteen forty four. God, I could have. I think I've got one downstairs. I know I've got one down there too. Um, and then we have the three hundred rum. So, so a couple of things right away: sharp shoulder, straight body, minimal taper, and no belt. Mm. So on the it? on the rum on the rum, the the wind mag still has that, uh, you know, characteristic magnum belt. Um, let rum, me let me ask you this, Ryan, about that belt yep. on the three hundred win. Mm-hmm. When I was looking at some of my uh, stuff here, they're not even, uh, they're not, it's not even. Uh, Non-functional. Not, it doesn't even do anything. No. Because they're doing even everything back, off the shoulder. Yep. Well, even back when they first started doing belts, it didn't do anything or what? No, they did then. That oh, was a, yeah, okay. Kind of a two thing, control head space and make it stronger. Uh, but that, we don't do that anymore. What about the feeding with the belt though? That, I know now we're talking about the 300 yeah. win right now in contrast, uh, yeah, but. Just, okay. So on belts, I, my hunting partner. Once made fun of me because I had a 300 Weatherby and he was making fun of the radius shoulder and that belt. He's like, you're going to have all kinds of problems. And I think he was just kind of poking me. I did have a feeding issue caused by a belt once. Really? Mm. I did. What happened? Uh, the belt hooked another belt. Oh. And it was, I think it was one of those like perfect storms. I've never, I've never been able to duplicate this. We shoot 300 wind mag down to the range. Never yeah. had a problem. I have a 300 wind mag, never had a problem, D- never had a problem. Mm. And one time I did, and it hooked another belt, and I had this awesome double feed thing. The round that was below the round that I was att- uh, attempting to feed kind of went up the feed ramp and kind of jockeyed the round going into the chamber in a particular fashion that I just stopped at my tracks, looked at it, I pulled the bolt back, I dumped the floor plate, fished around out of the ground, <laughs> closed the floor plate, threw it on the Close it up and 
got the job done. A, a case when two is not better than one. That is correct. Mm. And in fact, a case when two cases is not better than one. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, I've it's read about that. Mark. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't but think then, like, I wonder I how big a deal it actually I, is. It's kind of like when you were little and you thought that quicksand was going to be a big deal. Yeah. Nah. I stepped into uh, Boy, that one really a, like right. a peat bog hole. That's different. In southeast Alaska. That's like quicksand. Yeah, but... Well, it's, except it was much faster. Yeah. You think about quicksand. Quicksand, you thought, was going to be a huge deal. Back to the 300 rum. Yep. What's the, what's the whole history behind this thing? So, in America, generally, bigger is better, as we have a lot of jacked-up trucks driving around. We alluded to that, yeah. Big tires. Um, this was, this was a, a real stomper of a cartridge. And the goal was we want a mega powerful 30 caliber magnum round that can be fired out of a fairly standard action. Um, and this was like the biggest case available to make that work without doing, you know, an unconventional strange design or adhering a belt to it. Um, the case is based off of an old cartridge called a 404 Jeffries, which was like a, mm, a yes. an African hunting cartridge. And there's been a lot of really cool cartridges based off of 404 Jeffrey. Um, that share similar dimensions to this. In fact, our 6.5 BC draws a little bit of its power from the same or similar case dimensions. Um, but this was this was the thing. So you take a 404 Jeffrey, um, straighten it out a little bit, shorten it up a little bit, neck it down, give it a sharper shoulder. You can chamber it in 7 millimeter, 30, 338, and 375, and then you have the rum palette. Yeah. Um, and they are remarkably popular. So this dethroned the 300 Weatherby, um, and, and really got into three th- or 3378 Weatherby territory. Well, well into 330, 378, three 30, 378 Weatherby. Boy, that's a tongue twister. Um, and it is, it's a, it's an absolute stomper of a cartridge. Um, you know, I think, I think the loaded velocity with the 180 was like 3,200 and change. Um, so fast. That's that, nice. That's, that's what, nice. that's what I'm seeing between, I've, I was looking at kind of a, smattering of, of factory loadings with 180s actually predominantly and you're seeing yeah between th- 31 and 32 yeah on average yeah so a big 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 powerhouse um and then ag- again they also did it in seven 338 and 375 and presumably you could load this up with a pretty heavyweight projectile as well and yes. still have a lot of case capacity correct? so well yes and no so the the round in front of you is a two hundred and twenty grain ELDX. This is a large one, okay. Yes. And you'll notice it doesn't show you much of the bullet. Most it's not of sticking it sticking out very far, no, is it? No, you're right, it's not. Most of it is um, buried into the case well below the shoulder neck junction. Well it is same but neither is the uh, neither is the three hundred wind mag over here. And then we always talked about, well, well yeah, if you're gonna really be loading up a big bullet, then that's where the three hundred wind mag can go outshine the three hundred wisdom. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the only times maybe that it can now what are we looking at? We're looking at three hundred PRC. Mm. So Hello, they gorgeous. are using the case design and the neck to do the job that otherwise the case body and powder capacity w- was doing on the rum. Um, and they get very, very similar ballistics out of the two. So they're, they're very close. Um, the rum might have it just a bit because there is more powder and propellant in there to push that projectile. But the PRC, remarkably more efficient design. Um, the rum is great, though. It's, it's a hyper-velocity, hard-hitting cartridge, and it does, if, if you have a rifle chambered in rum, carry a ton of payload downrange. Um, but okay. there, there may be more efficient options out there as we've progressed, you know, Two plus decades in cartridge design. Um, I've known quite. What f- year was this? Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Turn mm-hmm. of the century. Yep. Yep. As far as velocities go, with the three hundred rum, you know, you can load some one fifties in there. Screaming hot. Like in the thirty fours. Yeah. Thirty four fifty or something like and, that. And if you're, you, know, you can do more. Um, I know some shooters that have some custom three hundred rums, um, and they're using them on longer actions or they're single feeding them. Uh, and they're they're putting up numbers that are astronomical. You know, they're utilizing all the case that they can. They're not eking into the powder capacity with such long 30 caliber projectiles, and they're pushing them at just warp speed. Mm. Um, you know, and and it is it is a, a wild cartridge. It's, it's very powerful. What are um what are barrels like for a 300 rum rifle? Like when you know when we're talking about twist rate and all that. Like what contour are you usually having to get? Probably a larger contour. Yes and no. Uh, so Remington sold the 700 SPS, which is just their standard synthetic stocked gun yeah. with a, a sporter contour barrel, so nothing heavy. Um, 
you know, fairly lightweight gun, very uncomfortable to shoot. I can imagine. Yeah, uh, in that 26 inch tube on that, um, take advantage of that that velocity or that powder and and eke out as much velocity as possible. Um, but then again, the sky's the limit. Like this could be chambered theoretically in any 700 long action with an appropriate bolt face. Um, you know, and if, if you choose to do a different barrel contour on there, hot dog. Um, good friend of mine, uh, Dallas, actually has a 300 rum that he hunted with me with that gun. He was single feeding. He was loading his out quite far. Uh, a heavyweight, it was a 200, and, I think a 210 or a 215 grain 30 caliber projectile at the time uh, and getting just warp speed velocity out of it. And his was just a, a 700, I believe it was one of their heavy barrel kind of police style sniper rifles. Um, and uh, it was an awesome gun, shot very well, uh, not comfortable to shoot regardless. Mm. A lot of uh, a lot of gun there. Like I said, probably not the most efficient cartridge on the planet, but... A lot of gas, though. We love We're, it. It's okay. endearing. Well, we let me ask that. you, you look at when this came out. Yeah. 99. Yep. I think I bought my first rangefinder in probably 2003. Yeah. So this is kind of like, I think rangefinders were definitely a thing. Oh, sure. But... I would say crude by today's standards. Yep. Oh, and, gosh, yeah. um, you know, you look at like a 150 going in the 34s. I don't have the drop data on that, but I imagine. Very flat. You're shooting pretty flat out to four, you know, four, five, five six. Is this like peak, the pinnacle of hold for here? Yep. Absolutely. Like, and is this when we reached, when we reached peak? Laser beam cartridge development. I think so. Would the seven would have been better or not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes and no. I mean, would have been certainly fast, higher BC bullet. Um, yeah. You've got some experience with this cartridge. I, so I Can have tell. one experience with it, and it's one of my fondest hunting memories. That's when I was moose hunting with my buddies up in Alaska. Went to a spot that they were very familiar with. They said, do you want to go moose hunting? I said, yes. Very honored that they invited me. And uh, got on a moose. Actually, um, uh, you know, one of the other guys spotted it. And they're like, you want to shoot that bull? I was like, hell yeah, I want to shoot that bull. So we clambered to the other side of the hill. Clambered. J- dropped down. Made a three, uh, stacked three packs. Tried to get steady. I had the old wisdom with me. Mm. And... Uh, with a three to fifteen, and I wasn't expecting. I, I knew we might get some long shooting there, but I wasn't expecting this kind of long shooting. Like I was thinking, six and in, probably shots averaging about four, right? And we range this bull. We're not going to get closer. Seven thirty three. I get down, and I'm just like, I didn't have a bipod, you know, in the old. And I just, I mean, I didn't feel steady enough to break that shot. Like I think I probably would have killed the bull, but the crosshairs were moving. Just you know, I mean, 7.33 is pretty far away, you know. A lot yep. a lot can happen. It's I was like, you know what? a remarkable amount of uh, self-control there. It was probably the most restraint I've ever exercised. And uh, because, like, I'm not saying the crosshairs were all over the place at the same time, right? And I was like, you know, I don't know. And the bull walked into the brush. 45 minutes later, well, in the meantime, my buddy Ryan had a 300 rum that I knew. Like, we'd been texting back and forth. He'd been doing tons of load development. Like, you know, and he's just showing me these just bug hole groups. I mean, this thing was shooting you know, half MOA, like, I mean, just, and uh, heavy gun built specifically for doing long range work on big game. He had a six to 24 uh, HSLR on it. Another scope that I like a lot. I should tell you what, that's the classic. And uh, so I, I go, Hey Ryan, if that bull comes out again, like it was weird. It's almost like I, you know, willed it with my mind. I'm like, can I use your gun? He's like, Oh yeah, for sure. So I set it up on the packs, like same position, got on the spot where the bull was. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, dude, it's on. If that thing comes out again, 45 minutes later, he comes out exact same spot, just facing the opposite direction. I run over, get on the gun. He tells me what to dial dial it. And I remember, I, was, I go, I can kill him now. He goes, kill him. Dropped it in from 733 right in the pocket. He ran 20 yards, tipped over. Couldn't believe it. Yep. That was it. That's awesome. It was crazy. And so I have I have a lot of fondness for this cartridge. I, I know that it works on big game at long. You know, that's one of the biggest games there is. It is. So I would it's, I would it's agree. the largest servid in North America. And certainly the long shot that I've taken on game. But, like, without, like, you know, in contrast, it's like, you know, we talk about, oh, what are what's your effective range? 
what's your, you know, only, you know, take responsible shots if you're confident at long range. And that was one where I went from like, hey, I'm not, I'm not 100% to like, and you know me, like I'm not like, uh, I guess like, uh, what is it like? Not boisterous or whatever, but like whatever. Like, yeah. but I remember, I remember being like, I can kill him right now. It wasn't like, like I was like, I'm gonna kill him. Like that's how that's how confident I felt with that setup. You know, knowing how the gun shot and everything. Mm-hmm. And it was cool. Well, I think so. yeah, I think that's reasonable. I don't yeah. I just if you are confident, then what's the difference between somebody being confident? I'm gonna hit that at 700 yards, and somebody being confident, I'm gonna hit that at 300 yards. I don't know what the difference is. I if you're confident, I think you know it's the you're same gonna, thing. If you're confident, you know you're going to hit it. Same thing. Yeah. But uh, well, and then of course this thing has the has the the payload at that distance as well. I mean that's that's an important factor too, is that it's maintaining. I'm sure it was probably still coming in pretty hot and heavy by the time it reached that distance. Oh, for sure. So that's yeah. awesome. Um, lost my train of thought in story time, Ryan. Big powder capacity, maybe not that efficient. Super powerful cartridge. That's why we find it endearing. Yeah. Recoil, free recoil. I was doing some internetting. Uh, <laughs> free reasy. 50, 50% greater than the standard 300, though. Oh. So, oh. It, note. I, when I look at this, I go, this is a great cartridge. It's effective. Like I said, I've got a fondness for it, but I think you do need to ask, your, uh, ask yourself the question do you need it? Right. Right, and then I guess, do you need it with range finders, with ballistic calculators, with you know what I mean? So like, I feel like there's mm. some some different stuff in there that a person needs to consider for how they're using the cartridge, to, you know, what they're hunting for, mm-hmm. the distances that they're going to be hunting. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're primarily going to be six and in, I know which I'm choosing. Correct. Yeah. Can I? I know we're I know we're long, but we're always long these ten minute talks. Yeah. Can I ask Brian? Why does the efficiency? Why does it matter? If you're I, buying the rounds and they're already loaded, you're not loading your own ammunition, so you're not really aware of how much powder you are or aren't using. Does the efficiency really matter? Well, I mean, that's a matter of personal taste, Jim. I think that you're just interested in that because you have to know how everything works and you have to get in all of these intricate details. Well, but in the end, the, th- the fact of the matter is, like Mark just proved, 300 rum, knocks down a moose, no problemo, at a pretty significant distance. You could have done it with other calibers that are apparently more efficient. But what does it matter? Sometimes I worry maybe we're 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 painting these quote inefficient cartridges into a corner because we're like, well, that was just from an era where people didn't have range finders like we do today, and they just zeroed in and held for hair and all that. But if you do still with the a cartridge like the three hundred room, if you do still plug in the data and the values and you know your oh, atmospherics sure, right? and you've got all the equipment, I mean, it's still. It still has ballistics about it. It still can be. It very does have accurate. ballistics. It has ballistics. Yes, it has those things. So, you know, and then just the efficiency thing, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I pay no mind to how much powder's in it. I just don't want to be wasteful, Jim. Uh, well, see, that's the, your tone that you're using implies that I do want to be wasteful. Do you? If I'm ignorantly wasteful, is it the same thing as being consciously wasteful? I don't know. Mark? I don't know. <laughs> Asking a lot of philosophical questions. Uh, yeah, on that's a little that's episode. that's a little deep for me. I mean, what I do know is, if a if, tree if, falls in the woods, does anybody hear it? No, because but, if you're there to observe it in any form or fashion, even if you're remotely observing it, you've already changed how that area of uh, life and and reality is occurring. It makes a sound. You're just not there. I see. A hundred percent of the time. I don't think it makes sense. A hundred percent of the other times it's made a sound, it's going to make a sound then. You cannot it, prove that. You know, I think a all. person looking at this cartridge, very impressive numbers, right? Very impressive numbers. I'm the one trying to keep us on track. That's uh, that's impressive as well. Yeah. Uh, it is. <laughs> but, I mean, it comes at a cost. You know what I mean? Shootability, if a person is sensitive, you know, people talk about bullet placement. Oh, you got to put it in the right spot. Like, this cartridge is not going to be as shootable as even a standard 300, which got which has, you know, that's not a small cartridge. Kind of got a rep already. You're, you're right, Mark. It does come at a cost. Efficiency does come at a cost. It does indeed. And today's episode, today's cartridge, is a perfect cartridge to talk about efficiency. James, if you would, please. I'd like to do that yes. as well. Mark, we'd like to talk about things that are relatively inefficient. In fact, you today 
in bringing this tremendous level of pronounce to the podcast and not using a single one of them, I like to point out, have also proven our fact. In fact, right behind this little, this little flag, this wood flag. <laughs> oh, no. What you see here is that our good friend MC Ryan has actually... I'm starting to believe that this has been planned. This is a setup. This was orchestrated. Catherine, so, I can't believe you were part of this. I can't also, believe you played party. Ryan, did you pick those ones up off the floor? These are the ones he threw on the ground he earlier before the, the episode. Ground, just as if they don't even yeah, matter. Yeah, well, I planned on recycling as them later. As if they don't even matter. Um, this right here, Mark, when he's done with these episodes, he carelessly leaves his pronouns behind. You, many of you know about Mark's pronouns. They I'm showed up in this, uh, the spaghetti shootouts. They showed up in many episodes before. Uh, he carelessly leaves them behind. MC Ryan has been collecting them for the last six months. Now... <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, we've been podcasting now for four years, I'm roughly speaking. I'm going to make speaking. sure these are, are all printouts. MC Ryan, they are incredibly. Oh, and there's some gems in there, Mark. Things that you printed out that I guarantee you don't even realize you printed <laughs> out. In color, mind they you. Are. In color. They're, uh... um, so over six months, this is actually counted. And, and honestly, huge props to MC Ryan for doing this because I guarantee God. he did it like at home, at night. What while, is this, like, some sort of printout intervention? Watching a, a murder mystery, but... Uh, last six months, 311 pages, estimated cost in paper and toner, $9.12, approximate trees used 3% of one tree. There's about 10,000 pages in one tree when it comes to paper making. That's, again, six months. If we ex- extrapolate that over four years, I'd like to point out $9.12, the amount of money you've cost the business... <laughs> Uh, comes yeah. out to about a seventy-two dollars and ninety-six cents. Okay, mark. D- costing the business, Jim. What we're creating here, this is a product. Not this to is, mention, this is an audio and visual product. There are costs incurred oh, when you're making visu- a product. It's visual. This right. is the cost of the doing business. That's occurred when people go over to the printer and they wonder, "Where's all the paper? What's with the toner? The guy keeps coming out no, over yeah. and over Do you to replace know what? the toner." Guess what? And then they all have important things to print out, and they can't because this. Is what everything that they've had has gone to. There's some notes written on this. Look at look at this. Here we go. Here's a perfect example. Mark printed off this web page. Catherine's over there with the camera. Uh, this right here. This does nothing for Mark on our podcast. This is actually just that's he not hit my control printout. P. That's not mine. You're gonna that's call MC mine. Ryan out now. You're it's gonna say mine. MC Ryan lied. Mark hit control P. What he did was he wanted one little bit of information. He just hit control P on the whole web page and got everything, including sometimes. The ads, including sometimes on Wikipedia articles, the <laughs> references sections that are multiple pages long, including full page color images, inc- like this one. I don't make this the is- websites. That's right, Mark. You don't make the websites because you don't know how to make it. This website, sheet left intentionally blank. That yeah. sheet was blank. He actually con- because he I bring that. a pen. What if I wanted to write on that? You didn't know that you were going to end up writing on that. Page mark. You oftentimes also bring a notebook that you usually write on just the first page of, and then ditch. This is also uh, that's that's according to Ryan, MC Ryan. That is. So there's some really good stuff in here, Mark. Yeah. Um, here's an, yeah, just countless examples. So we wanted to point this out because actually, Mark, what we've done is we've done something for you. We've we've tried to offset your impact <laughs> on the environment and also on this business and this company as a whole by dedicating one of the new trees outside of Vortex <laughs> Optics over by Lake Calhoun. Uh, we've dedicated one of the trees to you. It, it is Thank now- you. When do we get to make paper out of it? <laughs> uh, Mark, no, this one's yours. You have to try and keep it alive. It is your responsibility. We've already brought this up uh, amongst all of the uh, all of the ownership here uh, at Vortex. Um, even, it's Thank even you. gone up it's so an far. It's uh, as to the CEO's approval, um, and so everybody's on board. This tree is now is now 100% yours. So maybe the, you can feel that, as though you've given back a little bit. That um, is, and is it planted already? She's the it ground, is baby. already. It is already. But it's you'll be you'll be responsible for you know watering do I, it. And do I get a watering can? Well, Actually, it's, yeah, MC Ryan has one. It's um, funny you right asked that, here. Mark. I'm glad you as asked. As part of today's segment, we're gonna go take a gander. Look at this. Look, Look at, at this. that. Yeah, we can. Thank you. Oh my gosh! This is your uh, this is your watering can, Mark. So lightly used, with great responsibility. Oh, yeah. I mean, power. I mean, you know, inefficiency. With great inefficiency comes great <laughs> given responsibility. Well, now we'll keep it alive. Thank you. That's it's an honor. Thank you, and I will be. Uh, I will try to be more conscious of my paper use. 
The paperless office is a myth, by the way. <laughs> and also, maybe I could get like a sponsorship from like uh, from a like, paper company. From like Michael we have Scott. Lots of, we've got lots of paper companies here in Wisconsin. They like me. Do they? There's I'm, actually a uh, coalition, multiple coalitions, I believe, that are, are solely dedicated to trying to eradicate people like yourself from, from eliminating all trees from the earth. They grow the trees for the paper. They're paper trees. Did we cover the 300 realm? We did. We did. Mark. Is this going to be part of the podcast for the people that just they just want to hear about the 300? <laughs> well, we like yes. I said, it's it will be. Maybe it's inefficient, but man, do we love it! I think you've summed it up. Man, do we love it! For some reason, I take then I take that as a compliment. There you have it, everybody. 300 rum, the mark of cartridges. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, good shooting. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. See ya. Control P. Is this what you guys were planning the other day? <laughs> oh, yeah. But I walked in on, I walked in on a meeting with all of the people that I work with except me. This was it. I've been wondering for <laughs> two weeks. Mark, you, so the, I wish I could have found one while we were on the podcast recording. But there's so many, like, actually, here's a really good example. This is obviously the bottom of a web page on the Vortex Optics website. I don't that's think that's That's just recommending so other products you might be interested in. So that he actually printed this to take to a podcast once. Why would I have printed that? Mark, I, mean, I don't know. Question. This, I just these don't are the things like... that I can't actually, I can't figure out. There's a lot of these. At, uh, you must have printed out our website quite frequently. Control P. Uh, control P. Here's just an entirely blank piece of paper. Sometimes it prints a blank one at the very end. Was that an admission? Oh, look at this. Yeah. Here, look. Full oh. page color. Almost full page. Circle I'm mistaken. He did circle something. Yeah. You were getting at something there. That looks yeah. like it was from the uh, I remember that episode. Maybe the 300 hammer? Or yeah. yeah. There are some gems. The, the best is when I got to paper. 16, what was it, Ryan? 16 pages of Wikipedia references at one point, just all in a row. <laughs> a lot of good information there. Yeah. They were trying to get me to uh, donate to Wikipedia for a while. A little pop-up Wikipedia. Because you keep using their stuff for free. Yeah, I know, but like it seemed, um, I didn't trust it. I'll trust the information, I didn't trust the pop-up. I'll trust this free information on the internet. <laughs> We need that for the pile. <laughs> I'm still using them. Later, we're going to grind this into paper mache and... <laughs> oh, you know what? We could make uh, a statue. mulch. Or, oh, my uh, God. Um, Wait, what's, what's this? Like, uh, we could grind it up and <laughs> put it uh, by the tree. <laughs> what's that? The oh, the suggestions. We could make the worm bedding thing. out of it. That's true. Well, a lot of oh, look at this. This is the one I was looking for. Look at that. Look at that gentleman. That has extra weight to it. It does, because of all the toner. <laughs> And also, Toner you're something. talking about like, ooh, stack ups at the printer. I'm the only one that uses it. False. I'm keeping it warm. It's like uh, if you let it, what, what happens when you let a car sit for 20 years, if Jim? Is that good for the car? Don't use it. Do you lose it? Is that what you're worried about, uh, Mark? Are you worried that we're going to get rid of the printer if you stop using it? I would buy a printer if we got rid of the printer. 311 pages in six months, Mark. I think that's light. It's more than a paper a day. Yeah, I print at least once a day. So you're saying that what's here is not an accurate representation of what has actually happened. Oh, there's lots more where that came from. It was just a This is just the stuff that MC Ryan actually got when Mark would leave it behind. I mean, imagine all the times he's thrown it out, that Ryan couldn't get it, or that, you know, he's printed and it didn't right, make it that, into the room. Um, let's get that paper sponsorship. If you want to sponsor Mark with paper, please don't. But if you do, let us know. Please do. Until then, we got a tree water. Mark's going to be trying to grow his own. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, do you want to go see your tree? You yeah, let's go, uh, let's yeah, go, let's go check, check out, it out. Let's go check out your tree. But make sure we fill that up on the way out. <laughs>